All right, I'm going to be talking about uh, Black Cross Blue Sky by um, John Stanek. This is a World War II air-to-air -air combat game that is amazing. It's really cool. I met the designer of the game at Origins. I uh, played a game through with him. I really liked it. I got a copy of the game, and I'm going to show you some of the cool things about this game and how it works. Um, as you can see, it comes with all kinds of stuff in the box. It's a little bit pricey, but I think you're paying for what you get. You really get a good high-quality game here. Um, I threw out a couple of the games I own after I got this one just because I like this one so much. A couple other air to air games. It's the Battle of Britain. The this one I, I talked to the owner. This is this is a series, you know, volume one, so there'll probably be more volumes that come out with different planes, but this is purely English and Germans, the Battle of Britain. Um, you've got bombers and some escort fighters, and then you have the, the British interceptors. And you're gonna have different missions as a two-player game where you you have to try to, if you're the German, you're going to be bombing a target and then the allied player is trying to prevent that. And then uh, there's a whole bunch of scenarios that come in the book. So let me talk about what comes with the game. You have this real good high quality, like magazine quality, thicker than that even rule book. Full color, lots of illustrations, 51 pages, but honestly, it's not a complicated game at all. Um, a few pages of fluff lots of scenarios in the back, a big section of advanced rules that you know I don't suggest any time, but then all the scenarios, so it's really not that much. And so you got the, the rule book. It comes with a cheat sheet for each player, same thing. It's got a breakdown of all the different planes that are available, the sequence of play, uh, to hit modifiers, critical hits, things like that, and then examples of maneuvers in the back and how to mark things, and I'll show you that when, we, when I zoom in comes with some dice. You're going to use 10-sided die and 6-sided die. It comes with uh, over 100 of these cool, hard-pressed, cardboard, glossy airplanes. And you can write on these with dry erase if you need to. Um, a card for each of the different kind of game. Uh, a, a quick reference card for each of the different kind of uh, planes are in the game. And then fluff on the back about the plane, which is kind of neat. Um, markers for barrage balloons and different things that can happen. These are going to be markers for industry and different kind of targets. These are marks for different kinds of hit your plane can take, um, and for your just the informational tags. And then this is kind of the heart of the game here. You have a way to mark maneuver, maneuvering, ammo, and damage. But this, these babies are the heart and soul of the game. These are amazing. Um, these are the flight stands, and I got one here with a plane on it. There's actually, and I'll show you the rules here. Monica, why don't you zoom in right here? There's actually a thing he sells where you can put these little platforms on top and then you can secure models like this. This is about the same scale. This is a B-17 but it's about the same scale so you can use three-dimensional models on the same stands. Um, and he sells those. So I didn't, uh, I wasn't willing to spend that much money but if you're really into World War II airplanes that's what I would do. So, so these are the stands. Let me explain the stands. I got one here with a uh, Mitra Schmidt on it. You got lots of stuff going on in the stand. You have four altitudes that you can change your plane. Now, I didn't mention this, but this game is three-dimensional. Unlike Wings of War and other things where it's just two-dimensional, this game is three-dimensional. And so for flying and for shooting, all three dimensions is all in play. So you have four different levels. You have Nap of the Earth. Nap of the Earth, which is all the way down to the bottom, which means the guy's low level. And then there's low, medium, and high level. And then each level has six sub-level levels. And you can you crank those across on this, on this informational thing. So if I was at this, I'd be Nap of the Earth, level three. And then over here, you have the, 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 uh, the speed of the plane. You have level flying, which is L, diving, climbing, steep climb, and steep dive. And every plane has different restrictions. If you're flying level, you would fly, you know, according to whatever plane that is, that many hexes. All right, and if you're in a steep dive, you can you can fly less hexes because you're going up. And as you go up in different speed or different altitudes, you just adjust your at the end of your movement phase, you adjust your altitude either by clicking up the main level, like medium, low, or high, and then the sub levels. All right, <clears throat> so there'd be planes flying around on the board. So that's movement. So fly like that, big deal. And you have formations, so you're gonna have 10, 15 planes on here, and then you're gonna have uh, bombers and all that kind of stuff. All right, so on this chart, um, just to get a little more in detail about how the game works, you see the different planes, and it's going to tell you fighter, bomber, dive, bomber, bomber, whatever. But this is their speed. So a 
a BF109, you know, Mitchell Smith 109 can move six hexes at level speed, four when he's climbing. His climb rate is one, which means he's, he goes up one level every climb. Dive speed, how fast he does when he's diving, got a pretty good dive speed. Real good, better than anybody else. This is his turns, you know, how he can turn, slipping and rolling. The different maneuvers, uh, I'll show you how that works. And then the armament, this will be two face, two forward guns. The, the, the 110 has three forward guns and one rear gun. And this will tell you how many dice you can roll. This is how much damage that you're going to do for hits and all that. Um, all right. And then there's, these are all details. It's not complicated. These are all the details of the game, like braking speed, um, how much you can break, how much you can slow down per turn. You can actually decide to slow down, go down, you know, if you're going speed six and you want to spend two points to break, you can only go four, things like that. All right, then when you fire at each other, you just simply, or the bombers move first, then the interceptors, then the escorts. Um, and then once you guys make contact, the interceptors and the, uh, the uh, escorts are going to change positions. Now there's one's hunters and one is interceptors. If once all movement is done, then you do firing. So basically what you do is you pick one of your guys to fire, you count how far away he is, and then you got to add 10 points to the range for every difference in level. So these guys are both flying at high, these guys are both flying at medium altitude, and he's at level 6, he's at level 3. So if they were like this, even though they look like they're next to each other, it's 1, but he's at level 3, he's level 6, so you got to add three or 30 more points to that. So he's actually 33 away. All right, and then you have to look at the range and see well, what the range even is. And these guys would be out of range, they're just too much different level. But for our example, let's say that they're at the same, let's say they're at the same level. Same level, they're shooting each other. This is crazy, they're kamikazes, they're flying right at each other. Da 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 da. Alright, so they're going to count the range, they're going to get to roll the dice. Um, if you roll low, you could possibly, if you roll ones and stuff, sometimes certain planes, you mark with, you have to mark with ammunition because they could get low on ammunition. And then if they get hits, you're going to use these markers and you're going to stick them down next to it with the uh, amount of damage that they have taken. Um, if you roll doubles, there's possibilities of critical hits, and there's a critical hit chart, which is kind of cool. If you roll double, if you roll doubles when you shoot, then you you would roll the d10. So the more dice that you get to roll, the more chances that you're going to get doubles. It's not complicated at all. I really enjoy it. If you're tailing up, it's going to give you a modifier on shooting. So this Mitchell Smith's in bad trouble. This got this British guy coming up behind him, and everything is right on the board. You don't need to take take notes. The designer did a good job of using these markers to mark different things. The, these things here are maneuvering markers, uh, momentum markers, excuse me. So if you're trying to do a crazy maneuver and you run out of movement points, it's not just, and that's the end of it. You mark it with how, what momentum you are, and so on a subsequent turn, you already start off at that speed, rather than having to uh, start over from scratch to try to do a good maneuver. So that's it. Uh, the scenario all are different, but the scenario ends whenever one team is all shot down or the bombing run is done. The game comes with four big maps, double-sided. Each one is double-sided. This is just one of the four big, huge things. Comes with four of those. A whole bunch of different targets, and I've already went over all these things. There's a bunch of advanced rules. I like this game. I like it a lot. It's, I think it's going to see a lot of playing time in my house, especially as my boys get older. Monica, are you going to play this? Let me shoot you down. No. <laughs> oh well. All right. So there you go. Uh, I recommend it. Like I said, it's a little bit pricey, but you're really getting a, a good bang for the buck here. Um, I will not own any other World War II fighting uh, airplane games now. This will be my game I exclusively play. So, Black Cross Blue Sky by John Stanick, and you can find it online. Thanks for joining us today. For more written, audio, and video reviews, as well as the number one board game podcast, check out the website at www.thedicetower.com. Until then, this is Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. Alright, zoom in on this. <laughs> Such a weirdo.